Dear devotees, welcome to our today class on life and teaching of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. Uh, and Tha uh, Srila Narottam Das Thakur disappearance day is on October 21st. So our today's speaker is an initiated disciple of His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj and has been serving Srila Prabhupada mission as an educator, teacher and preacher and offering seminars and classes locally and online. Prabhuji has been practicing Bhakti Yoga over 28 years. So on behalf of ISKCON Bhagavad Mahavidyalaya in North America, I would like to welcome our renowned speaker, His Grace Jiva Tattva Das. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, whenever you're ready, you can start the class. Hare Krishna, Ishwar Krishna Prabhu. First of all, I would like to thank you and IBMV team to giving me this opportunity to present such wonderful teachings, to share those teachings with others as well. And uh, we would like to get started with the <laughs> Hare Krishna. That's the cue. <laughs> it's actually a stupid thing. Sorry. Uh, so, yes. Wonderful opportunity for us to meditate on great Acharyas and Narutam Das Thakur is also sometimes referred to as the seventh Goswami. So six Goswamis of Vrindavan we know and Narutam Das Thakur is also uh, recognized very well. And we have so many of his teachings and practices that we take on from day to day activities. So let's do Prabhupada Pranati to receive Srila Prabhupada's blessings and uh, the invocation prayers. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarine O Magyana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam One day Ham Shri Guru Shri Utpadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahangana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakha Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Deen Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesh Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapte Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishpano Sute Devi Pranami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhu, Vaishna Vibhu, Namunamaha, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shiva Sadigaur Bhutta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. So, yes, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is also called the seventh Goswami, uh, yet at the same time, the Contribution of Srila Narutam Das Thakur is also very profound. And so today we will be covering the teachings and lessons we learn from his life and seek his blessings, how we can get that Krishna Prema we are all looking for in our life. Hare Krishna. So Srila Narutam Das Thakur, if you are coming to the temple, you are doing Guru Puja, right? That Guru Puja was written by Srila Nottam Das Thakur. So the Divine Disappearance Day of Srila Nottam Das Thakur is on 21st, as uh, His Grace Yeshua Krishna Prabhu just shared. And uh, Srila Prabhupada would generally refer to Nottam Das Thakur as a great devotee acharya in the disciplic succession of Gauriya Vaishnava Sampradaya the disciplic succession coming from Lord Chaitanya. Now, we all know about God Purnima, right? When Lord Chaitanya appeared, he appeared because of the call of Advaita Charya. Similarly, there is a similar beautiful pastime with a, that's associated with the appearance of Srila Narutam Das Thakur. 
once Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was doing his kirtan and suddenly he started to calling out Narottama, Narottama. So Nityananda Prabhu and other pashas, other associates, they got confused. They asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there is no one here by the name Narottama. Who are you calling about? But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was still calling out to Narottama, calling out the name. And at that time, with the inquiries, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu responded that he, has born, he is not yet born. However, he will come up because how will this movement go forward? That was something he was concerned. And that's why he was calling out to Srila Nautam Das Thakur's name. And he, again, there are two versions. One says that he immediately went to Padmavati River, Padma River, and he took bath and there were amazing waves in the waters. And he said to, you know, river personified Padmavati, she appeared and he said that I'm giving you this Krishna Prema that you should deliver to Narottam. He'll come when he is a young boy, a dark complexion boy. And she was a bit confused. She's like, there's so many dark complexion young boys, they come to the uh, river for bath. How would I know which one is Narottama? So at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, if you see the similar waves and over flooding of your banks happening when he enters the, your waters, when he touches your water, you would understand that this is Narottama. And to him, you should deliver this Krishna Prem. Now, we do not know how that Krishna Prem was you know, presented. Uh, there are multiple versions of it, but the importance is that Krishna Prem some, some say that it was delivered in a golden pot. Some say that these were the tears of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that merged. Hare Krishna. In the waters of Padma River. Nevertheless, the importance is that Lord Chaitanya himself is calling out. Just like Lord Chaitanya. Advaita Acharya had previously called out for Lord Chaitanya to appear. Lord Chaitanya is calling out Narottam's name so that this movement that he has started can continue to move forward. And River Padma, she is keeping this Dharoha, this treasure of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very securely waiting for this young boy Narottam to appear and come to take bath. So it is very important for us to understand that uh, when this pastime happens, right? Srila Nautam Das Thakur, he was a lifelong brahmachari. And he had visited all the holy places during his pastime. And um, it was very interesting that he was son of a king. So he was born in a caste family. His father's name was Krishnanand Datta. And Krishna and Dutta also had an older brother, Purushottam Dutta. So the Delta name of these two brothers was beyond compare. I means they were really famous. However, the Brahmanas in the region, they would not give any consideration to this because they were under the Muslim ruler, Nawab Hussain Shah and so forth. So, and uh, from purushottam dutta there was shishya santosh dutta who was the cousin of narottam das thakur but narottam das thakur was not yet born the parents were really growing old and they were wondering if they will ever bear a child sometimes it is important to know like what is the purpose of everything why do we do different things so again purpose of marriage is to beget a child putra the one who delivers you from the poo hell this is from the materialist perspective, because devotees, we all understand from the teachings of Shastras and by the Acharyas that they do not visit Yamlok. Yamdutas do not approach the devotees. And in this particular case, these, this, these couple, they were very religious, very pious, yet at the same time, they were worried. And it just so happened that once Kishanan was sitting and Amazing personalities, they seem to approach him and say that you are going to have a wonderful boy. So he was surprised. And then immediately his wife Narayani, she came to him and said that 
It is so amazing that I felt like an amazing personality has entered your heart and from your heart he has entered my heart. So immediately what happens in India, there's a common culture that you call the astrologer. And try to understand what is the meaning of all these good signs that are happening in your life. And the astrologer looked at their charts and said, actually, you are going to have an amazing son. And this son will be very famous. Now, when a king hears his son will be very famous, he, they always think that my son will be famous as a great king. They always have the tendency that they will you know, further the kingdom, further the fortune, and further the name and fame of the family. Well, as time passed by, Narayani gave birth to a baby boy, and this boy was named as Narottam. Now, from the very childhood, there are some amazing pastimes referring to the uniqueness Shila Narottam Das Thakur was displaying. When he was the Anna Prashan, uh, you know, when the baby is given some Anna, some grains, that ceremony is done. At that time, they were trying to feed sweet rice to you know, Narottam, the young boy, young baby. And um, yet at the same time, he was not accepting it. So they were thinking, oh, he's such a nice boy. He agrees with all the things. Why is he not taking this Anna? There must be something wrong with him. You know, they were focusing on that. So at the same time, he was really adamant. He would not, he would keep his mouth shut. He would turn his face away. He was not accepting it. And there was a version of Brahman. He was crossing with some prasad in his hand, you know, that was from the offering. And he said, may I try? And the parents were eager to have their child accept some grains to you know, continue with the ceremony. So they definitely said, yes, please try if you can. And as soon as the Brahmana came, the Vaishnava came and offered some Krishna Prasad, Narutam Das Thakur, he immediately accepted it. So this was also another sign that the parents said, oh, our son did not accept this sheer, the you know, rice pudding, because it was not offered to the Lordship. He's a very pious soul. He's a great soul, as we understood. And the astrologer also revealed. So this is a great fortune that such a wonderful boy is born to of us. And he only accepts Krishna Prasad. So that became a custom that he would be offered after an offering has been made to the Lordships. Srila Nathan Das Thakur, from the young age itself, was showing some amazing signs. When he was going to school, he was an exceptional student. He was learning things very fast. Now, when a child is born, sometimes parents also have like, what is the future of this child? And they had actually consulted with her astrologer. And the astrologer had at the time, the Jyotish, he had said that, you know, your son is exceptional. However, you do not want your son to come near the water bodies. Because if he goes near the water bodies, he will go mad. Well, this is serious, right? The parents are thinking, oh, we should not let him go near the water body. And we all know that River Padma, she is waiting for Nautam Das Thaku to come. And in this way, the time was passing. His father had made sure that there are enough guards to make sure that the boy is saved, not go approaching any water body. And as uh, Nautam Das Thaku was growing up, he was seeing something amazing that many times people who are going to Jagannath Puri, to you know, Gauradesh, they were stopping at Keturi. This is where he was born. So again, Srila Narutan Das Thakur, you know, on the bank of River Padma, there is a place. And then Keturi is where he was born. And um, this is where he was living. And uh, it's... He was seeing all these pilgrims uh, you know, coming over there and they were staying, continuing to, you know, before continuing with the journey. And this is a normal trend in India back in those days. They didn't have cars and overnight trains and so forth. People would generally travel in groups and they would take stoppages at different times. And Keturi was one such place. So it's part of the eastern part of the Bengal, so currently Bengal. And... Um, here, Narutam Das Thakur was observing this, so he had this desire to see some of the devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
but how do you see any devotee you know or how do you see these pilgrims who are traveling to holy places as you are going so he talked to the different guards and he was able to make one guard agree that the guard will hold his hand and in the evening he will just go around looking at the pilgrims that are there so as they were walking Nathan Das Thakur, it became a daily custom that he would go out with the guard, he would see all the pilgrims and all. And sometimes people would also feel nice that, oh, you know, this is the prince, Krishnananda Dutta's son, you know, he's coming and he's making sure that we are all nicely, you know, situated and so forth. And once it just so happened that he happened to meet Krishna Das Babaji, one of the saintly personalities, Havashnava. And he started having conversations. So he made a rapport with Krishna's Babaji to inquire about various subject matters. And Krishna's Babaji would generally refer to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes and his association with Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya and so forth. This was very much satisfying to Narutan Dastra, where he find great solace hearing about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So every day he started coming now, one day, uh, Narayani Mataji, his mother, she had a concern. She approached her husband and saying that, you know what? It is not safe that our son is going out every day, meeting these pilgrims. And we have so many warnings coming from the astrologers. So can you do something about this? So, of course, father is you know concerned about his son. Yet at the same time, he also wants to make sure that the son is secured and safe. So he makes a request to Krishna Babaji to come to his palace instead of his son going every day. So Krishna Babaji started coming to the palace on a daily basis and he would narrate the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So much so that Narutam Das Thakur started having this strong desire to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You know, again, when you hear about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how wonderful he is, that he delivered Jagai and Madhai. When you come to know that in Jagannath Puri, there is Ratyatra happening, and there are these three Rats, Lord Balaam, Lord Jagannath, and uh, Subhadra Devi, as they are in the procession, people can see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is dancing in each of those groups. Actually, there were nine groups, and he would be dancing in all of those groups. So he was getting this intense desire to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he inquired, so how can I meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Kishanath Papaji said that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has already departed for his abode. And this was very uh, heart shattering for Narottam, young Narottam. I was saying, you have been telling me all these wonderful pastimes. You have been telling me about the six course swamis. And are you telling me that I cannot see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So Kishanath Papaji could understand that this boy is special. He has such intense desire to see the Lord, to see the lost devotees. And uh, so when Narutam showed these symptoms, one night Nityananda Prabhu, Prabhu appeared in his dream and said, you should go and take the gift of Lord Chaitanya from the Padma River. And hearing this, Narutam Das Thakur, he immediately, young boy, Brahma Murat, he wakes up without letting anyone know, he goes to Padma River and he starts to step in and as soon as he steps in, great waves appear. Now, Narutam, his complexion was dark. And River Padma, the personified Padmavati, she appears. And she says, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu deposited with me as Dharohar to be delivered to you, as the treasure to be delivered to you. And this is Krishna Prema. And once Narutam Das Thakur, he embraces, he accepts that Krishna Prema that was delivered. He starts dancing. Something amazing happens. He had a dark complexion. Suddenly it transforms into a golden complexion. And he is dancing like mad in love of Krishna. He's calling out you know, Krishna's name. He's calling out Radharani's name. He's completely immersed in that mood of separation. Vipralamba bhav. You know, the mood of separation is calling out to the lordships. And calling out to Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda. Now, in the morning, early morning, ladies also, they go, they wash clothes and they collect water and so forth on the riverbank. And suddenly they saw this Naruttam 
the prince, you know, son of King Krishnananda, you know, jumping up in the air madly, calling out different names and so forth. So they, they got concerned. They said, let's go and inform the king something has happened to his son. And so they went back and informed the king. When the parents, you know, saw their son, they couldn't believe. First of all, he was not that dark complexion boy anymore. And suddenly his complexion had gone golden and he was like a mad person calling out to the lost ships. He was constantly, you know, shedding tears. All the eight forms of ecstatic symptoms were visible in his very being. And a young boy, just 12 years old, showing all these symptoms can be very much shocking. Parents may think, oh, what has happened? Has a ghost, uh, you know, taken control of my son or something like that? So they, of course, refer to different, you know, Vaidyas, the different astrologers, Jyotish, and so forth. And they came to know that, you know, this son of theirs, he's actually a great personality. And of course, on the instruction, Srila Nathan Das Thakur, he wanted to go. It was very interesting that even when Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj was visiting him, Narutan Das Thakur, you know, this is before he got Krishna Prem, he would have some amazing conversation with his father. He used to say, Father, you know what? Let's run away to Vrindavan. Let's go to Vrindavan and take shelter of the six Goswamis. Let's take shelter of the you know, deities in Vrindavan. Let's constantly engage in Bhajan Kirtan. And then he would say, but we should not take us you know, servants. Because if we take our servants, those servants can bring some gold coins with them and we'll be in trouble just like Sanatana Goswami got in trouble almost. And almost was about to lose his life. But somehow he was saved by the mercy of the Lordship. You know, he gave those gold coins to the innkeeper. So in this way he would talk and he would constantly tell. So his, his father was really getting concerned. Now that has come to fact. Srila Narutam Das Thakur, he is now, even as a young boy, calling out, uh, to the Lord's name, and he is showing his interest in going to Vrindavan. So he was under a heavy guard, but it just so happened that his father, Krishna and Datta, had to go for some business, you know, to carry out some activities of administration. And this gave an opportunity by the instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityana Prabhu, he can, started his journey towards Vrindavan. Now, his journey towards Vrindavan is also very glorious. It is said that how he was continuing to move on his journey. And as he was going on, you know, on his journey to Vrindavan, he was constantly, you know, feeling that weakness in his body, he would fall down. And it just so happened that as he was experiencing this weakness because of the separation and at the same time, the pace of the journey and so forth, he was visited by Shimati Radhani, who gave him milk. Now, this particular pastime is also very important that it refers to his Swarup Siddhi states, what is real identity. Shila Nautam Das Thakur, is in Chamuk, is, he is Chamuk Manjari in Krishna Leela. And what is the duty of Chamuk Manjari? To supply milk to the gopis. And so now this is an opportunity where Srimati Radharani is getting an opportunity to serve back. That is the glories. You know, Lord, the devotees are eager to serve the Lord. And Lord is also looking for an opportunity to serve the devotees. And at that time, he accepted little milk, but he was in separation. So it's like, a, you know, he wants to go to Vrindavan. He is feeling weakness. He is getting unconscious because of those emerging emotions as he's experiencing. Yet at the same time, you know, he's also the separation, the weakness, the journey, uh, the ecstasy, all of them are combining and creating such a, a state that he was falling unconscious. At that time, Srila Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami, they appeared. 
Now he had understood that the six Goswamis, they had already, once again, five of them, they had already left. And uh, he was instructed by Srila uh, Nityananda Prabhu to take shelter of, to uh, understand this knowledge of devotional service from Srila Jiva Goswami. And here, when he sees Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami, he's feeling again those aesthetic symptoms. And they reveal to him that Radharani gave you milk, please accept this milk and continue your journey. So he's in this mood that, yes, I will be able to take their shelter. He accepts the milk. He is feeling energized. He reaches Vrindavan. The first thing is, I want to see Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami. And then he comes to know that they are not there anymore. So again, it's, it's very interesting. Sometimes you know it, but then you need to be reminded again and again that they had left. So this is one of the symptoms of Vipralamba Seva, that you know, in separation, you are serving. And he is calling out. And so we see this beautiful bhajan by Narutam Das Thakur. He is calling out Vaishnava Thakur you know, to all the associates, the pastures of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this song is normally sung by the devotees in the society when any of the exalted Vaishnavas, they move on to their journey in Krishna Seva and Srila Prabhupada's you know, mission on onward journey. So Srila Nautam Das Thakur is showing with his writings in Pratna, in his uh, Chantrika, Prema Bhakti Chantrika. He's, these are the only two books that you know he has, but he has written beautiful songs, beautiful prayers in separation, begging for Lord's mercy, glorifying the Lord and his devotees. We know so many of these songs, Hari Harayanam, Yadvayanam, and so forth. And uh, he is in this mood of separation, he is calling out that, you know, where is Rupa? Where is Sanatana? Where is Bhatta Raghunath? And in this way, he's calling out to their names in his prayer, O Vaishnava Thakur. This is very heart touching, and you can only imagine how he must be feeling seeing the separation, seeing that, knowing that, you know, the uh, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, and others, they're not there anymore. So he meets uh, Srila Ragun, uh, Loknath Goswami. And he approaches Loknath Goswami in a very humble mood. And Loknath Goswami had made a vow that he would not initiate anyone. And when Srila Narutam Das Thakur, he says that, please accept me as your disciple. He refuses it. Now, this is also very a heart shattering because he had this desire seeing the simple, you know, humble form of great Vaishnava Acharya, and, but he has not been accepted. And even how he serves after getting rejection is exemplary. He would go every day and wherever, you know, the place where uh, Srila Lokanath Goswami would pass two in the morning as part of his daily duties, you know, uh, Kriyas, he would clean up that place very nicely. And after he has passed this tool again, make sure it's very clean. And for a year it was going on. And Srila Loknath Goswami, he was wondering, who is the person? I mean, every day I go and it's very clean. And uh, who is doing this seva? So one day he you know, goes there early just to see who's coming. And he sees Srila Nautam Das Thakur coming over there, cleaning the place very nicely. And he's really, his heart melts. So he's the only initiated disciple of Srila Loknath Goswami. And while he's initiated, you know, this is because he's served this personality with so much love, so much devotion, so much humility that he, for a year or more, he was cleaning up the place where the personality was passing this tool. And then he started, as per the instruction of Nityananda Prabhu, started understanding the Vaishnava literature, the scriptures, under the instruction of Srila Jiva Goswami. Now, Srila Jiva Goswami, he had three, dis, uh, you know, he is a Shiksha Guru, 
Diksha Guru is Srila Loknath Goswami. And he was teaching Shamananda Das. He was teaching Shinivas Das and then Narutam Das. That's the name uh, given. And all these three students, he's teaching very nicely the Vaishnava literature. And at this time, Srila Jiva Goswami, he receives a letter from Janwa Devi, from Naudweep. She is saying that you have so much Vaishnava literature there in Vrindavan. It would be nice if you could pass on that Vaishnava literature to us. And this is what starts a whole new series, right? And uh, Chila Nartam Das Thakur. Now somebody would say, how was he staying in Vrindavan? He was practicing Madhukari, right? And they were studying Goswami scriptures under the guidance of Srila Gos Jiva Goswami. And at the time, when uh, three of them were meeting and studying, one day, after receiving this message from Janva Devi, Srila Jiva Goswami called all three of them and said, that you must preach this message of Sriman Mahaprabhu far and wide. Right? Taking these literatures of the Goswami, you must quickly go to Bengal and begin preaching. So he gave them their degrees. So again, we know that uh, Srinivas is referred to as Srinivas Acharya. Shamananda is referred to as Shamananda Pandit. And Srila Narottam is referred to as Narottam Das Thakur. So they gave up their residence in Vrindavan and accepting the order of their Shiksha Guru, Srila Jiva Goswami. On their heads so again, this is Narottam Das Thakur, his Shiksha Guru is Jiva Goswami. And his Diksha Guru is, of course, as we talked about, Loknath Goswami. They are taking this treasured scriptures of Goswamis with them. They started on their journey to Bengal. And as they continued on this journey, they gained, uh, came to Vanavishnupur. So in Vanavishnupur, there lived a king of Takoids and thieves. His name was Sri Virambir. And the night he had the scriptures stolen. Why? Because he had a, another astrologer who said that they're getting great literature. <laughs> so again, yes, a great wealth, great treasure. Yes, it is a great treasure to have such wonderful Vaishnava literature, the scriptures. And they, he was thinking there has treasure of some kind. So in the morning, when he saw the script, they saw the scriptures stolen, the three of them, you know, they felt as if their heads had been hit by a thunderbolt. They were feeling miserable beyond comparison. And three of them began searching the four directions for the scriptures until they finally news came to them that it is King Virambir who had stolen the books and was keeping them hidden in his royal storehouse. So once they came to know this, uh, Shri Shamanan Pandit, he you know, had it for Utkala and Narutam Das Thakur. He started for Keturi Gram. While Srinivas Acharya, he stayed behind thinking to somehow deliver the Goswami's book from the king's storehouse. So yes, there are amazing pastimes referring to uh, Shaman and Pandit as well as uh, Srinivas Acharya. But we'll focus on Sri Nautam Das Thakur's journey. So Nautam Das Thakur, you know, he, want, he had this desire to see the holy place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he went quickly to visit Navdvi. And arriving there, he began chanting, Oh Gaurahari, Oh Gaurahari, on the banks of Ganges, hundreds and hundreds of times, and offering many prayers to the Lordship. You know, he is sitting beneath the shade of a tal tree, and he began to wonder, where is the actual place of Sri Chaitanya's birth? He sat there for some time, thinking of what to do next. So just at that time, an old Brahman, he appeared, you know, he was walking by, so Narutam Das Thakur, he immediately rose to his feet and showed respect to the Brahman. And the Brahman said, Baba, from where have you come? What is your name? So he definitely uh, introduced himself and expressed his desire to see the holy birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he simply inquired, Baba, have you seen Chaitanya? So the Brahmana, he is replying that, what are you saying? Every day Nimaya Pandit sits with his disciples at this cart and discusses the Shastra. 
And then from a distance, I watch him and wonder at the beauty of his divine form. Today, I remember seeing that very form seen it within this tree here. We are used, he sits every day. So he, again, the Brahmana, he spoke and the tears of ecstasy started pouring from his eyes. Now when Srila Narutam Dastavi heard this, he said, Baba, it is a great fortune that I have beheld you with these eyes. I am able to see you. And of course, the tears started rolling down from you know eyes of Narutam Das Thakur as well. And he was falling to the ground. He touched the Brahmana's feet to his head. And the Brahmana, the old Brahmana, he gave his blessings to Narutam Das Thakur said that you will attain devotion to the lotus feet of Govinda. And that you will preach the grace of Shri Gaur Govinda far and wide. This very instance shows that even though Narutam Das Thakur has such an exalted uh, spiritual master, Shiksha and Diksha Gurus, yet he was very humble. And Srila Rupa Goswami in Nectar, once again, Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu is explaining this, teaching us that we should always consider ourselves to be neophyte. And some one of the main teachings we understand from this incident is how Narutam Das Thakur, even though he was given the title of Thakur, he was the given the degree, you know, he was accolades were given by Srila Jiva Goswami himself, who's like equal to 100 PhDs, such as, you know, great personality. Yet at the same time, we see that how Narutam Das Thakur is teaching us and we should not let pride take any uh, space in our life, in our heart. We should be very, very careful. And on his request, the old Brahmana, he showed Narutam Das Thakur the path to where the house of Jagannath Misha was. So Narutam Das Thakur started following that path until he came to the house of Jagannath Misha, the father of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when he arrived at the house of Jagannath Mesha, he fell down at the door with tears in his eyes and offered his full obeisances while he was reciting various prayers in glorification of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So entering within the house, he had darshan of the lotus feet of Shuklambura Brahmachari. Narottam Das Thakur, he offered his respects to, you know, uh, Shuklambura Brahmachari. He paid obeisances to him. And from the various ecstatic signs, the symptoms that were visible, Shuklamu Chakravati, he could understand that Narutam Das Thakur was an agent of Sri Chaitanya's mercy. He asked, who are you? At that time, Sri Narutam Das Thakur, he explained himself that he had been living in Vrindavan under the care of Jiva Goswami and Loktan Goswami, and that he had just arrived in Navdik. And at that time, he was surprised. So he said that, Baba, you have come from Vindavan? You with Lokanath and Jiva Goswami? And at that time, when Narutam Das Thakur, he rose, he embraced him heartily, and there were endless questions that came. And so Narutam Das Thakur, he got to meet other personalities like Ishan Thakur, the old servant of Shri Sachi Mata. And upon meeting him, he offered his prayers of respect at his holy feet as well and introduced himself. So Sri Ishan Thakur also touched Narutam's head, bestowing his mercies, blessings upon him and embraced him affectionately. So this is the glories of great Vaishnavas that they are ready to offer all respect to others without expecting any respect in return. And they are having these loving exchanges. She loved Prabhupada, he established the society with this mindset that we can all have loving exchanges. Dadati prati grahanati guhiya makhyati prichati bhunjate bhojate chaiva sadvidam priti lakshan. That giving of gifts and accepting gifts, inquiring about confidential matters and discussing confidential matters, as well as offering prasadam and accepting prasadam. So these are the six loving exchanges that enables us to go closer. And we have a perfect program where Srila Prabhupada established all essential factors. Means again, temples are vacuous without any miseries and so forth. Now, after this, Narutam Das Thakur, he met Sri Damodar Pandit and paid respect to Sri Pati and Sri Nidhi Pandit. 
So he was visiting various personalities in Navdeep, and all of them were affectionately embracing Narottam Das Thakur. After staying for a few days in Navdeep in Mayapur, Narottam Das Thakur, he went on to visit the house of Advaita Charya in Shantipur. There he offered his respects to the lotus feet of Achyutananda. Achyutananda introduced himself and inquired about the health and well-being of the Vaishnava Goswami, Vindavan Goswamis. So Sri Narottam Das Thakur, he stayed in Shantipur for two days. Then he went to Ambika Kalna, to the house of Gauridas Pandit. Now he is visiting these various uh, places which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his uh, Pashas, his associates were. So at that time, Sri Hridaya Chaitanya Prabhu was staying there. He was a disciple of Gauridas Pandit. So when Sri Narottam Das Thakur offered his respect to Hridaya Chaitanya, the two of them affectionately embraced and Narottam gave him news of the activities of Goswamis in Vrindavan. And after staying in Ambika Kalna for a day, he went on his place with the Ganges, Yamuna and Saraswati meet the village called Saptagram. <laughs> so as he's continuing on his journey in that place, Udharan Dutta Thakur, you know, he lived there, so he got to meet another Vaishnava. Sri Nityanand Prabhu had previously given his mercy to the resident of Saptagram. And so all the people were great devotees of the Lord. And after the disappearance of Udharan Dutta Thakur, the people of the village felt like as if they had lost their vision. So when Sri Nirtam Das Thakur, he was going on, he was completely absorbed in the separation from you know, they were in separation from their guru. He was in separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, from um, Lord Krishna in that Vipralambha Bhav. So in great agony, they were passing their days. And so when Nartam Das Thakur offered his respects to all the Vaishnavas there, you know, they immediately embraced him. They were as if the life, you know, they had find their life and soul. And so after meeting them, he continued his journey to Kardaha Gram. And in Kardaha Gram, Sri Nityanar Prabhu had a residence with his two energies, Sri Vasudha and Sri Janva Devi, they lived there. So he went to the house of Nityanar Prabhu and continued his journey and so forth. So this is telling us that how Nartam Das Thakur is showing the instruction of his spiritual master spiritual masters, in this case, Lugnath Swami and Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami said, go far and wide and preach. And he's preaching. Yet at the same time, before we preach, we get energized. We, we get empowered. And he's getting so much empowerment by going to these places of pilgrimage. And his voice, when he's calling out to the Lord, she is choking in ecstasy. And uh, she Parmeshwari Das Thakur to Sri Narutam Das Thakur within the inner portions of the house with Nityananda Prabhu's house, which was literally reserved for women only and brought him to the lotus feet of Sri Janva Mata and Sri Vasudha. So after they were introduced to Narutam Das Thakur, they could understand that he had received the mercy of Lokanath and Jiva Goswami. So they also bestowed their mercy on Narutam Das Thakur. After staying there for four days, later on, he spent much time discussing Krishna Katha in great ecstasy with Sri Janva and Sri Vasudha, Devis. And finally, he bade them farewell and left for the town of Kanakula, Kishanagar, to see the place of Abhigram Gopal Thakur. As he was continuously going on his journey, finally, you know, after continuing to go through the journey, he came to Keturi Gram. And in Keturi Gram, as soon as his cousin, they came to know of his presence, they came quickly, you know, Nartam Das Thakur. And when they came, he, you know, immediately, that is one place that uh, he was uh, able to establish a temple. So there was a construction of temple at Keturi that occurred. And when he visited Keturi, the local people of Keturi, they were very happy to hear Srila Nautam Das Thakur's auspicious arrival. So they all came and they welcomed him. And after King uh, 
Krishnananda Datta and his brother Shipurusharam Datta had left this planet. Shri Santosh Datta, son of uh, Purusharam Datta, he looked after the property. And Shri Santosh Datta, who was the cousin of Narutam Das Thakur, he saw Narutam Das Thakur coming and offered respectful obeisances at the lotus feet of Shri Narutam Das Thakur. He came and took the dust from Shri Narutam Das Thakur's lotus feet. He was crying in joy. So this is, you know, because he knew that Narutam is Nashtika Brahmachari. He has given up everything. He is a great personality, as was revealed by the astrologers. And out of affection, you know, Shri Narutam Das Thakur asked the well-being of Santosh Tattva. And after a few days later, Shri Santosh Tattva, he accepted initiation from Shri Narutam Das Thakur and Shri Radha Krishna Mantra. So again, this is where we see the lineage. He's preaching now. So again, this is where the preaching really starts. And King Santosh Tattva then asked Shri Narutam Das Thakur to establish a temple of Shri Radha Krishna. So she, seeing this desire, the intense desire of his now disciple, Shri Narutam Das Thakur, is referred to as now Mahashay. Mahashay, he gladly granted permission. So King Santosh Tattva, he constructed a huge temple, a bhoga temple, a kirtan mandap, and the quarters for the devotees, lake, flower gardens, and guest houses were built. All these were built within a few months. And the magnanimous festival commenced on the full moon day of Falgun, the appearance day of Lord Shri Gauranga. So when we talk about Gaur Purnima festival happening in Mayapur, this is where the start of that is. It actually started in Keturi. And so they started a grand celebration like the Rajasuya Yagya of ancient times. And the invitation for this was sent forth all over India to all the great Vaishnavas. And the kings and Jamidas and poets and scholars, literati. And so all of these, they started coming there. So it is very interesting when we hear about this pastime, one of the amazing lessons that we learn is Srila Prabhupada used to say that we can practice devotional service even sitting under a tree. We don't really need anything. But then people won't come to us. That's why we have these nice temples so that people become curious to visit and see the lost ships. And it is a nice arrangement where they can come. And the devotees can also have nice loving exchanges. And we can impart this important knowledge. We send out invitations. Anyone we meet, you know, doing... Hainam Kirtan on the street, we give them invitation for free lunches, the love feast, free dinners and so forth. So they would come to the temple, see the lost ship, hear about the glories of the lost ships, and also eat the sanctified prasadam, which is immersed with Lord Krishna's mercy, so that they get purified. They are awakened to their true consciousness. Jivera Surupaya Krishna Nityadas. So here at Keturi, the temple is built. And here we get this example that how Nathan Das Thakur, you know, from his initial place is now starting to do, do this preaching, uh, preaching extensively. So the magnanimous festival that commenced on the full moon of Falgun, the appearance of Lord Goranga, and they started grand celebration like the Rajshri Yagi, we already talked about this. And Sri Narutam Das Thakur Mahashaya's letter of invite was also sent to the associate Shri Goranga in Puri, Shri Khanda, Yajigram, Shantipur, Navdvip, Kardaha, Kalna, etc. So again, they were invited. And in this temple, six deities were installed. You know, Shri Goranga, Shri Vallabhikanta, Shri Braj Mohan, Shri Krishna, Shri Radha Kanta, and Shri Radharaman, they were all installed. And in this way, we see how the Keturi festival proceeded under the supervision of Nartam Das Thakur. It is one of the biggest Vaishnava assembly in the history of Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. And this was all supervised by Srila Nartam Das Thakur Mahashay. And as we continue, once again, his preaching started from this point I was spreading far and wide. 
Among the literary works of Shira Nautam Das Thakur Pratna and Prem Bhakti Chandrika, they are famous, right? These two books have the synopsis. I was just saying, when we read Shri Guru Vandana, Shri Guru Charan Pranma Kevala Bhakti Sadma, it says it's coming from Prem Bhakti Chandrika. Yes. yes. So this is the Hindi version. And of course, we also have songs of Vaishnava Acharya's the English version. And they have a whole section with poems by Shira Nautam Das Thakur. And when you read these poems, you can feel that great ecstasy, the mercy of Lord Chaitanya that's flowing through Nautam Das Thakur and giving us shelter in this uh, uh, present state. So he has expressed his intense separation, the vipralamba bhav, the humility, how to be more you know, humble than the grass on the street, more taller than the tree. And he's hankering for Krishna. He's crying out, calling out for the mercy of Krishna. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Daya Kuru Mure. So he's saying, give me your compassion. Jiva Daya is another aspect. And then Kripa is also there. Now it's very interesting as you know we are reading the Vaishnava literature, we are seeing even these two words have great difference as how Nautam Das Thakur is so nicely utilizing in his writing. Daya is when someone recognizes that you are in difficulty, they, do, they become compassionate towards you and fulfill your desire so you are not in that difficulty. That's there. Kripa is causeless. So he is calling out that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Daya Karamore, because I am the most patita of this sage. That's the humility of Nautam Das Thakur. And at the same time, we see him in his prayers um, where he is Radha Krishna Pranamura, Jugala Kishor. When we he, read, sing this song, this is where he is revealing his uh, swarup that with the mercy of the gopis, I would offer Chamar Seva to the Lord Ships, to Sheshi Radha Krishna. So this is where we understand that he is actually Champak Manjari, as is revealed by the Acharyas as well. And very subtle way he has shown in his writing how we should conduct ourselves in the society of Vaishnava, outside the society. And Srila Prabhupada always gives this example that we should present ourselves as perfect gentlemen and ladies because that should be the attitude that we are here to give everyone a great experience to help them realize how blissful this life is when one takes to devotion service. If the life completely transforms, it transcends the three modes of material nature and one can easily relish the true happiness which is in Radha Krishna Seva. So as Time was passing by. Gradually, Shila Nautam Das Thakur, he was feeling more and more separation. And Nautam Das Thakur, you know, showing these symptoms, the devotees were getting worried about his departure. They were thinking, oh, is he going to leave us? He's showing such strange symptoms. So he instructed everyone to perform Nam Sankirtan and to continue to pursue devotional service and arrived at Gambhila, the bank of Ganges. And uh, he sat on the bank and ordered his disciple to rub his body. Now, as soon as his disciple started rubbing, massaging his divine body, he started turning into milk. I started mixing with the Ganges water. Everyone was very astonished. Yet at the same time, on his request, they were all chanting the holy name. So his body started melting in the waters as they were chanting and they were crying. And he was completely in this ecstasy and in his complete meditation, he went in. So the disciples, they took that milk, so his body just melted into milk. And so the disciples, they took that milk mixed with the tears and the Ganges water, and they put it in a big pot and brought it to a place near Keturi, where Nautam Das Thakur lived, and built a beautiful samadhi for him. So to this day, that samadhi is there. And what is the name of this samadhi? This is called Dud Samadhi, the Samadhi of Milk. Now, Srila Nautam Das Thakur has so much compassion. He even embraced the caste brahmanas who blasphemed him as a Shudra. He 
still is a great symbol of compassion, Jiva Daya. He is an icon of reference to our Brahma, Madhava, Gaudiya, disciplic succession. So we can take some amazing lessons from the life of Srila Narutam Das Thakur and seek for his mercy. Do also grant us in our life the same love of Godhead, Krishna Prema, that we all hankering for. And conduct ourselves understanding his life and the teachings that we understand from his writings in Prem Bhakti Chandrika and Pratna books. And I would encourage devotees to have these two books. Okay? Again, you can easily go to Iskand Desiretri and you can see it, these books. And they are today, the technology is enabling so much facilities. You can go to YouTube and you can check out all those bhajans being sung by the great Vaishnavas, the great Kirtanias, that we can make our life completely blissful, full of ecstasy of devotional service. Hare Krishna. So today we are covering, we covered the teachings and from the life of Srila Nautam Das Thakur. And they are amazing lessons. And we could continue to go on. Unfortunately, we do have a time limit. So I really appreciate and thank you, uh, His Grace Ishwa Krishna Prabhu and the IBMV team for giving me this opportunity. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji, for this wonderful class. Help us immerse in the nectar of like, you know, life and teaching of Srila and Rottam Zas Thakur, also called Thakur Mahashe. So uh, I'm just wondering if you have a few minutes and if devotee has any question, like, you know, we can take if you... Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, devotees, if you have any question, if you want to ask, like, you know, please raise your hand or unmute yourself. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, thank you so much for this um, discussion here. <clears throat> yeah, if you could just repeat for me the what went on at the Keturi festival and and how what was it an annual thing? Yes, so at Keturi festival on the full moon night of Falgun, which is the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was a great festival that was organized. So prior to this, there were six deities were installed in Keturi Gram. A big temple was built. And prior to that, Shri Shantosh Datta, the king at that time, the cousin of Nartam Das Thakur, he actually came when Nartam Das Thakur came and he took his shelter and was initiated. So I'm giving you a reverse path as well. So Shri Nartam Das Thakur, he initiated his cousin into you know, the param process and the disciplic succession, gave him Radha Krishna Mantra. And with a strong desire of Shishantosh Datta, the king, you know, that he wants to have a nice, wonderful temple built there. Shishantosh Datta gave him the permission. A great temple was built. Uh, bhoga rooms were built. Facilities for devotees to stay were built and so many other places. Even the Kirtan Hall is there. And now, seeing all these facilities, Shishantosh Datta used this as an opportunity to welcome all the great uh, leaders in the society as well as all the Vaishnava community. And this was the greatest gathering on this full moon day. So again, so the invitation was sent out, all the Vaishnavas and the great leaders came. And we understand from Bhagavad Gita, as the leader performs, the general populace follow. So Shilanottam Das Thakur was really hitting at the heart of the society to convert all of these leaders into Vaishnavas, to give them this opportunity to take to devotional service. And so the Kirtan went on all day, all night, for a couple of days. So this was at Keturi Gram, which is now part of Bengal, not West Bengal. West Bengal is one of the state in India, further to the east of West Bengal is Bengal used to be part of Pakistan, we used to call, be called as East Pakistan, then it got freed. So okay. Bangladesh, yes. And so there at Keturi Gram, which is on the bank of River Padma, this great festival was held. Even Janma Mata, she came and she blessed this festival. And uh, it is from there, the preaching started far and wide. Of Das Thakur. Does that answer your question, Mataji? Yeah, so I guess it was basically a Kirtan festival that was meant to attract, um, I'll say, 
the upper crust of society, maybe, to to bring them into Krishna consciousness or something like that. Yes, and opening of the temple, installation of six deities, all of that happened during this time. Yes. Every Gorpanim, basically. Okay. Yes, and that's how Gorpanim festival came into being. This was the first grand Gorpanim festival. Oh. And then afterwards, in Mayapur, it started as oh. we know today. Yes. Okay, I, I guess um, Keturigram is in Mayapur. No. No. It is in Bengal. It's a different country now. Bangladesh. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a different country. It's yeah. based from the Kanan Mayapur location. Yes. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, I see Jiva Tattva Prabhu, you have any question? Sorry. Um, I'm I just calling sorry. you. Sorry. Yeah, I, I was seeing some other eco. Sorry. That's sorry, Prabhu. Yeah. Uh, any other devotees? Any other questions? Sorry. Okay. I think then, if your permission, let's say express our gratitude, Prabhuji, by chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And if you all can unmute yourself, yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare. 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Thank you Thank you Thank you dear devotees for joining this class and we will meet again with the next class next month Thank you very much Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Om Tat Thank you